So the Zerto Secure Appliance. So it's an all in one, the brand new all in one Zerto Virtual Manager appliance. So we're moving away from the, the Windows um, deployment into um, it's based on Linux. Not that it really matters. It's a it's an OVF deployment, you know, easier management and easier um, and easier to troubleshoot, simplified for all of our customers, simplified to support experience. You know, we don't have to, to worry about support of 2016, 2019, 2022. This has been turned on, this feature off in Windows, right? It's, it's the standard by, by default for everyone. So everyone gets the same from Zerto, makes support easier, makes troubleshooting easier, makes the whole experience better for everybody. It's free security hardened. So out of the box, Zerto has hardened it for you. We're not going to provide a 25-page hardening guide alongside the product and say, if you don't implement this, by the way, we're not recoverable for anything, right? So it's pre-hardened. So even if you're the smallest customer or the largest customer, you can able get to the new, you know, you can able sorry, you can essentially get the same level of hardening out of the box from Zerto. And that includes MFA, raw based access control as well. And then the big question on everyone's lips is right, how are we how are we getting people from A to B? Well, we've launched a new seamless migration utility. So between five and 20 minutes, depending on size of the environment, but I might did some of my lab the other day and it was like, I think it was like two minutes or something stupid like that to migrate. Um, so I'm going to hand over to JP. Uh, you, I presume you just want to talk to this slide, JP, and, uh, you know, instead of trying to share. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave this up. If we have time, I can do the demo. But um, so this project has been asked for for years by customers, and it's uh, it's been really cool to be the, the product manager while it's kind of came to fruition. Um, We've actually had a Linux appliance for over a year now. Uh, we released uh, the first version with 9.5 uh, last year in like June or so. Uh, the first one was just simply Docker running kind of our microservices behind um, you know traffic proxy. Uh, with our 10.0 release, we're moving to micro Kates or Kubernetes instead of just straight Docker. Um, we've also got a lot of other really cool open source stuff in there. Uh, Key Cloak, FluentD, uh, Nginx is the reverse proxy. Uh, and the idea here is, is that Zerto over the last, say, three years uh, has went from an MSI file that you install on Windows that's .NET to .NET Core first, but it was still running on Windows. And now we've made the switch to, Microsoft calls it .NET again, but we'll say .NET Core, uh, running on Linux inside of a container. Uh, all of the new stuff, right? So we, we've done just like everybody else in the industry. We've taken a monolith and we're trying to break it apart where it makes sense. Um, and probably the, the easiest way to see most of that is the new things, right? So on Windows, we had a diagnostic utility that would collect logs, um, let you switch uh, passwords and things like that. And uh, what we've done with all of those is wrote those as a microservice now that runs behind that that proxy server. So everything is web-based. There is no more Windows components. Um, the only thing that is still uh, not open source is MS SQL, which... Just, just, just a yeah. question about the, um, uh, the ZVM appliance. Is this a single virtual machine that can be installed with a Kubernetes version inside, or is there a cluster of virtual machine? So can, you, can we deploy? So to, today, we're delivering it as an OVF file, single virtual machine. Um, my roadmap and uh, whatnot contains the ability to deploy multiple small DVM appliances um, and to be able to provide kind of a, an N plus one or whatever redundancy to all of our services. Um, we've talked about doing just the Helm chart and saying, hey, here you go, put it on whatever you have. Uh, we're a little more gun shy on that just because of the stuff like Chris said, you know, it's pretty hardened. We know what it is. We don't have to support it on top of 15 different things, but um, it, those are all possibilities in the future, right? And that's why, you know, we wanted to show you this slide is because for me, this is the coolest part, right? Um, you know, all the, the stuff for customers is great and everything, but me, I'm a, I'm a nerd and I like to, to look at the architecture of things. Um, and for the upgrade <laughs> process, Justin, is this... Uh, so you, you would get like an OVF for the initial deployment, and from that point on, you're just doing deployment updates inside of the Correct. Kubernetes, or yeah. is it like in like yeah, so OVF and such? So since nine five, we've had just a simple command line option where you say, "Hey, I want to do an upgrade." You tell us what version you want to go to, and we'll tell you what are available. But you just type in which like update you want to go to. If for some reason you don't want to go to the latest, you hit enter. We go out and grab all of our new containers, and then basically just you know 
standard Kubernetes or right. container update yeah. process, right? We replace the old containers with the new containers. They start up, do any migrations they need to do, and then voila, you're on the latest version. Um, so yeah, it's the idea is it's going to be much more um, SaaS-like in terms of how you do updates, right? You just say, hey, I need the updates. At some point, um, when we get to GLDR, you know, maybe those just happen automatically like, a, like an iPhone app, right? Like we just push the new container. Uh, right now, we're still shipping software, whereas like, hey, this is a new release and it contains all of these updates. Um, you know, ideally, we'd like to get to the point where, hey, just our management console container needs an update and it got pushed last night, like full on SaaS, but on prem. Um, that's something that I've been working with the team on to, to get us there. We're not there yet, but we're, we're getting closer. So, uh, Zerto traditionally, uh, for almost as long as I've worked there, uh, has had two releases a year. We're going to move to quarterly releases kind of coming up. Um, just, uh, they may be features, they may be fixes, but we're going to try to get a little bit quicker. And the idea is, is that, you know, at some point, um, we have to kind of keep up with our GreenLake counterpart, right? Right. And so he's not going to want to wait for six months for a new release of my ZVM. So at some point, you know, we'll get faster and faster and faster. And the idea is, is that each each update won't be as uh, big of a leap. It might just be a single service. It might just, you know, be a database or something like that. You may end up having like a like a slow ring update for the yeah we've, the we've old talked coolers to customers and then a, and then a like lead, leading edge you know fast ring update capability right we've talked to a lot of customers and um, that is one thing that we always get asked for is well can I can I lag behind a little bit our our MSPs are traditionally a little bit farther behind just because they have customers that maybe don't want to update um, so we're we're considering all that stuff to how we do it you know. Um, Maybe we'll do like uh, like Microsoft where you can be early access, normal, or kind of you know a little bit behind. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's all on the roadmap. And, and what do you have right now as far as like phone home? Is it all basically entirely customer premises? So, so there there right now there's two containers that call home. You see the the GreenLake agent on the left. Uh, that one's not enabled by default. That's if you want to be part of the GreenLake ecosystem. Uh, and then the Zerto Analytics container also optional. It's on the right. Uh, that's the, the what we call a transmitter that sends data back to Zerto Analytics. The GreenLake agent is much more of a, a two-way street. Uh, it can receive commands back from GreenLake, uh, but it it adheres to all of the the GreenLake standards for that you know security stuff. So basically, you have to pair it to GreenLake to your account, and then it sets up kind of a almost like a like a point-to-point -point VPN more or less. I don't know the details on it. I don't. That's I mean, different guys part but where is this writing its data the actual the backups so this is just our management appliance okay uh, so the the vras handle all that data movement through the the slides that chris talked about this guy is more like our on-prem paint paint of glass to see what's happening okay. um think zvm for and esx equals vras zvm equals vcenter type type stuff and is there any protection for uh, stolen credentials? Like if, if somebody gets, you know, you've got our back, which is great, and MFA, sure. it's great, but someone has been able to get through that, is there anything in there uh, to protect against that? So we are 100% moved to key cloak in this stuff. So what I'll defer and sidestep the answer on is we can do whatever key cloak can do. Okay. So uh, basically, we customers have been asking for MFA and all kinds of integrations and things like that for years. Um, believe it or not, I, I, I'm told that's not that much fun to write uh, as far as the developer is concerned. So what we decided to do is, well, we're going to go Linux. Why don't we just use the open source thing that can integrate with thousands? I mean, if you Google Key Cloak plus whatever you want to integrate with, there's probably at least a million guides out there for it. Um, so that's why we went that route. And we can really dig into the details, but um, basically we we deprecated all of our integrations with uh, vCenter authentication to go to Keycloak. So I'm, I'm seeing three hardened. Uh, right, this is for the platform running atop Kubernetes. Are we talking about network policies? Are we talking OPA? 
Uh, what are we talking from a pre-hardened perspective? So basically what we're saying is we're pre-hardening the Linux operating system in our containers. Okay, not the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Well, there's not a Kubernetes cluster. This is Kubernetes in a box. Right, but it's still running Kubernetes. So right. is, it, is Kubernetes hardened itself? Like network policies, OPA, proper... We, as account. far as I'm aware, I can dig in and, and get back to you on it. But as far as I'm aware, we're using basically micro-cates off the shelf and then whatever they recommend. Okay, got it. 